I welcome you here uh, this day. Uh, this weekend, we celebrate Confirmation Sunday, and we'll follow the order of service as uh, you find it in your, your bulletin. Um, we'll begin by singing our opening hymn, uh, Christ Be My Leader. And again, the hymns are printed in the back of the bulletin. Please rise. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We confess our sins to the Lord God. Almighty Lord, we confess that we have sinned against you and one another. We have neglected our prayers. At times we have lost our way. We've not always exercised our unity. We failed to draw on the joy you have for us in all circumstances. We have fallen to the ways of the evil one, and have not always lived holy lives. On account of these sins and others, we justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But the Lord Jesus, you have died upon the cross for our sin. You have risen from the dead and are alive. We therefore ask that you would forgive our sins, supply us with what we lack, and by your grace daily confirm our faith in you. Dear Christian friends, Jesus was crucified for your sin and has risen from the dead. Today, the risen Lord Jesus intercedes for you and brings to you the forgiveness of sin so that you may stand before him in heaven for all eternity. Therefore, in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, in holy baptism you began your good work in these young people who will be confirmed tomorrow. You bless their instruction and training in your word. And we pray now that you would pour out upon them a rich measure of your Holy Spirit, that they may be faithful to the promises they make and live out their lives in bold witness to the faith they confess to the glory of your holy name. Amen. You may be seated. Uh, 
Our first reading this day comes to us from Acts chapter 1 and begin reading with verse 12. Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. And when they had entered, they went up to the upper room where they were staying. Peter and John, and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus and Simon the zealot, and Judas the son of James. All these with one accord were devoting themselves to prayer, together with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus and his brothers. In those days, Peter stood up among the brothers the company of persons was in all about 120, and said, Brothers, the scripture had to be fulfilled which the Holy Spirit spoke beforehand by the mouth of David concerning Judas, who became a guide to those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. Now this man bought a field with the reward of his wickedness, and falling headlong, he burst open in the middle, and all his bowels gushed out. And it became known to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so that the field was called in their own language, Akhladama, that is, field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, May his camp become desolate, and let there be no one to dwell in it. And let another take his office, so one of the men who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these men must become with us a witness to his resurrection. And they put forward two, Joseph called Barsabas, who was also called Justice, and Matthias. And they prayed and said, Lord, you know the hearts of all. Show which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in the ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them. And the lot fell on Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle reading this day then comes to us from 1 John chapter 5, beginning with verse 9. If we receive the testimony of men, the testimony of God is greater. For this is the testimony of God, that he is born concerning his Son. Whoever believes in the Son of God has the testimony in himself. Whoever does not believe God has made him a liar because he's not believed in the testimony that God is born concerning his son. And this is the testimony that God gave us, eternal life. And this life is in his son. Whoever has the son has life. Whoever does not have the son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. And this is the confidence that we have toward him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. If we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the requests that we have asked of him. This is the word of the Lord. And please, please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. And the Holy Gospel for this seventh Sunday of Easter comes to us from John chapter 17, beginning with verse 11. Jesus said, Holy Father, keep them in your name, which you have given me, that they may be one, even as we are one. While I was with them, I kept them in your name, which you have given me, I have guarded them, and not one of them 
has been lost except the son of destruction, that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sake, I consecrate myself, that they also may be sanctified in truth. Thus far, the gospel of our Lord. And at this time, then, we confess our Christian faith as we... Uh, actually, we'll do that a little bit later. At this time, then, we'll sing our, our sermon hymn. You may be seated. And um, we'll sing the sermon hymn, um, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds the First and the Last Verse. You may be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I greet you this day. As we gather this weekend and we celebrate with great joy a very special time. And even as we gather today, we know that our risen Lord Jesus is with us here in our midst. And we are able to hear part of his prayer. Now I'd like to begin by asking um, uh, parents, whether your children are at home or not, um, what is it that you wish for your kids? Or if, even if you're not a parent, what is it that you wish for young people today? Maybe it's a wish you currently have. Maybe it's a wish going back many years ago. What is something you wish for young people? Somebody be willing to, to share an idea? All right, thank you. That they would always follow God and his teachings. Sure, absolutely. Uh, you share that wish, wish with Jesus as well. Anyone else? You know, as I think of... Uh, when my girls were born, first of all, you just pray that they come into this world healthy and everything goes well. And then, of course, over the years, many other things are added to the list. And with you, I certainly share that as well, that they would not lose their way in life, but that they would always have their faith in Christ. Um, parents might pray that they would have friends that they'd be happy and not sad, that they would be safe and secure and successful, successful at school and life in general. You know, kids have wishes as well. And in fact, a few weeks ago, I asked the 
confirmation class a very similar question. I asked them, you know, what do you wish for in life? They had to think about it a little bit, and then they came up with a few different things. They want a good job. They want a good family. And they want to stay in the faith as well. You know, I was a kid once. Now I'm just a young person. But, you know, as I think back, the wishes that kids have really aren't all that different than what we adults have. They, too, want to find their way through life. They, too, want to have friends. They don't want to always be part of something where there's always arguing. They want to be happy, not sad. They want to be safe, and they want to succeed as well. Maybe it's sports, maybe it's band, maybe it's school. Many of the same wishes. Today, using the words of our gospel reading from John chapter 17, I'd like to consider with you briefly what it is that Jesus wishes for. Not just for young people, but for all of us, regardless of our stage of life. And I think the ultimate wish of Jesus is, can be found so well in the first verse of our gospel reading, where Jesus prays and he says, Holy Father, keep them in your name, which you've given me, that they may be one, even as we are one. Keep them in your name was the prayer of Jesus. Every Christian parent, I suspect at one point or another, that that's their prayer for their children as well. Don't let them lose the faith. Let them stay in the faith. Let them follow it all the days of their life. And here Jesus, Jesus joins us in that prayer. Holy Father, keep them in your name. It's a prayer he prays for you as well. Even now, as we've, this past Thursday was Ascension Day. Our Lord has ascended into the heavens. Even now, as he's at the right hand of the Father, he's interceding for us, and he prays that we would be kept in the name of Jesus. It's an important prayer. Because we know that there's a danger, isn't there? There's a danger that we could lose our way, that we could lose our faith. There's a danger that just as Judas betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver, so we too could betray our Lord and turn our back to him and forsake him. It is a dangerous thing because it leads to eternal destruction. It leads to hell. The threat is real. And certainly it is my prayer on this confirmation weekend, not just for those two confirmands, but for all of us. And I like to think it's your prayer as well. That the Lord God in his grace and his mercy would keep us in his name. But even more importantly, it is the prayer of Jesus that we would be kept safe and secure in the faith. Because to be kept in the name of our Heavenly Father means that we have faith in the Lord and all that He is and all that He does. Faith in those things that we've learned, many of you have learned many years ago in confirmation. Faith that Jesus, the Almighty and true God, became true man. The incarnation on Christmas, he took on human flesh and he came into this world. And as he walked this earth and grew in years, he lived a life without sin. He went about a three-year ministry on this earth, preaching, teaching, performing powerful miracles and signs, attesting to the truth of who he is. And at the end of it all, he went to the cross for our sins, for the times when we have lost our way and strayed along life's path. Jesus went to the cross for those sins. 
And on the third day, of course, he rose from the dead and has ascended into the heavens. And one day again, he will come to judge the living and the dead. To be kept in the name of our Father means that we have faith in all of these things. It means that we have faith that our salvation happens not because of our works or our deeds, but it happens solely because of what Jesus has done. It is through faith in him. It is by his grace and his mercy. To be kept in the name of our Lord is not only to believe these biblical doctrines and creeds and truths, oh, they're so very important, but it's also to live the faith, to be kind and compassionate, forgiving one another just as in Christ God has forgiven you. Ephesians 4.32. It is certainly my prayer that none of us would lose our way, would lose our path. We have been given a great gift from God, and it's very important that we, we don't blow it, we don't lose it. But if that concerns you, find comfort in the fact that still today our Lord Jesus is at the right hand of the Heavenly Father, interceding, praying for us. Holy Father, keep them in your name. As such, then, it is also the prayer of our Lord Jesus that we would be united as one. Certainly, parents want their kids to have friends, Kids certainly want to have friends, people they get along with, people that they enjoy, have relationships with. As we are brought into the Christian church by the grace and mercy of God, we also believe in the communion of saints. We are connected to every other believer. We are part of the one holy body of the Christian church. And certainly we pray that we may find unity there in that place. Oh, certainly the Christian church is not perfect. We live in a broken world and we are sinful beings. We hit our bumps along the way too. But yet it is the prayer of our Lord that we may be united as one in faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, part of the body of Christ, part of the communion of saints. Thirdly, Jesus wants us to be filled with joy. We find joy in him. Verse 13 speaks about this. Parents certainly want their kids to be happy. In many ways, I think that no one, it hurts no one more when a child is sad than the parent that's him or herself. Certainly kids want to be happy. Who wants to be sad after all? Our Lord wants us to find joy. Just like a cup which is filled to the brim or some other container that is filled to the brim that we may draw from this source of joy regardless of our circumstances. Because the circumstances of life, well, they're not always happy. They're not always good. In fact, in verse 14, the very next verse, Jesus acknowledges that the world may hate us Because we are not of the world. As Christians, we are set apart. We don't hold all the world's values, the world's beliefs. We have faith in Christ. We have his words, his laws, and his commands. Sometimes those things make us unpopular in this world. Sometimes the world may hate us because of that. Oh yeah, circumstances may not always be easy. Circumstances may not always bring us happiness, but in spite of that, it is our Lord's wish, it is our Lord's prayer that we may have joy, that we may draw upon the joy that God gives to us regardless of our circumstances. Because circumstances can change as quickly as the weather. 
But we have something more sure, more certain. It is the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is the love of God that he has given to us in our Savior. It is the promises that he speaks to us that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. It is the promise that he gives to us here again this day, given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Oh, what a great cup of joy this is for us. We've been baptized in the name of Jesus. We've been called as Christians. And we could draw from this source of joy and hope regardless of circumstances. And just as it is the wish, parents, kids alike, that they be safe and secure. I know as a parent, I always have found myself to sleep a little bit better when they're home and all is safe and well again. It is the wish and the prayer of our Lord Jesus as well. It is his prayer. I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. Jesus prays in verse 15. He doesn't want to take us out of this world. We are still in the world. But he doesn't want us to be of the world. He wants us to be guarded and protected from the evil one. Because Satan and this fallen world, temptation, oh, it's easy to fall into these things. And these are dangerous, to be sure. The evil one seeks to pull us away from our faith in Jesus Christ. The evil one seeks to destroy and kill and separate. But Jesus... Jesus prays for our protection. Just as we do in the Lord's Prayer. But deliver us from evil. Jesus prays that we'd be kept safe from the devil, the world, and our sinful nature. That these things may not pull us away, but that we may have our security, our safety, now and for eternity. In our Lord Jesus Christ, in the words promise and the grace that he gives to us. And fifth, just like parents and kids might wish for success in different things, success in life, success in so many different aspects of it. In his own way, Jesus prays for our success. In verses 17 through 19, it speaks to us as Jesus prays about our sanctification. That we'd be made holy is what that simply means. Holy, of course, through faith in Jesus Christ, but also that we would lead successful Christian lives. That we would be empowered by the Holy Spirit to bear good fruit, to live godly lives to succeed in our Christian walk with the Lord, to succeed in times of temptation, to succeed in following our Lord. Yes, our Lord Jesus prays for our success as well. I will pray for you. It's a phrase you may have heard, or maybe you've spoken to someone else. And certainly if you say those words, I hope that you follow through and actually do pray for the person. Jesus, Jesus prays for us. And today we rejoice in that. And furthermore, we are invited to join our Lord Jesus in our prayers for one another. In fact, I'd like to give you a challenge maybe at least once a week in the year to come to pray for our confidence. Pray for them by name. Pray that the Lord God would keep them in his name. Pray that they may be united as one in the church. That regardless of circumstances, they may find joy in their faith and in their Lord that they would be kept safe and secure 
from the evil one. That they would succeed, especially in their sanctification, their Christian walk with the Lord. Pray for them. But also pray for one another. You know, in confirmation class, on a number of occasions, I encouraged, well, even assigned, uh, the kids to, um, in the course of the week, to, to email one another on a one-to-one basis, how can I pray for you? And then to include them in their own personal prayers. To be the body of Christ, to pray for one another. Our Lord Jesus saw it important enough to pray for us. Oh, how much more can we in great joy pray for one another these things as well. We are the body of Christ, and we can encourage one another in this. Just as we find encouragement this day that our Lord Jesus, that he prays for each one of us. He prays for you. That really is the sweet gospel in all of this. Our Lord not only wishes all these things for you, our Lord not only prays that these things will happen for you, our Lord has accomplished these things for you. What is it you want? As we hear that, as we contemplate that question, we hear what our Lord Jesus wants for us. We hear it in the prayer he gives to us here in John 17. And it's certainly my prayer that God would bless us, not only this weekend as we remember what God has done for us in the past, but that we would rejoice in how God blesses us today and of how he promises to continue to bless us into the future. There indeed is our source of joy and celebration. Amen. And now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, our risen Lord and Savior. Amen. At this time, then, we present our offerings to the Lord. Please rise. And we speak these words together. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, And take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. And uphold me with thy free spirit. Amen. As we contemplate confirmation this weekend, maybe you think back of your own confirmation or your own confession uh, in the Lord that you once made. And so I invite you to reaffirm your faith uh, here this day. And to all the believers gathered here this day, by the power and the working of God, the Holy Spirit, you've been called through the sacrament of baptism and have been given the word of God to believe in Jesus as your Savior. On account of Jesus, God forgives your sin and promises you a resurrection to life everlasting. God also gives you his word and calls you to feed your faith through worship and study of the Bible, to fellowship with other believers in the church, and to let your light so shine before others as you live and practice your faith on a daily basis. I therefore ask you here today, Do you reconfirm your faith in Christ Jesus as your Savior? Do you trust in the Lord, believing that he forgives you and daily grants you his grace? 
Do you plan with the help of the Holy Spirit to continue to feed your faith through regular worship, study of the Word of God, fellowship with other believers, and by living it daily in your life? If so, then respond, yes, with the help of God. I therefore affirm your confession of Christ and your pledge of a walk with him in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And let us pray. Holy God, we give thanks to you this day as you have enabled us through your word to be able to listen in on your prayer. We thank you for your prayers. We thank you for your intercession. We thank you for all the good that you have accomplished in our life. That you've called us to faith. And we ask, O Lord, that you would grant to us and keep us in that name. In your name, that we may always trust in the salvation you've accomplished for us. We thank you that you have united us in the body of Christ. And pray that again you would continue to bring unity and peace. We thank you for the reasons of joy that you give to us and pray that regardless of circumstances, we may rejoice in all that you have done and accomplished for us. We thank you that you've overcome the evil one and we ask that you'd guard and protect us from him. We thank you, O Lord, for your holiness and ask that you would sanctify us and grant us success in our Christian walk and life with you. Lord, in your mercy. This day, Lord, we also ask these things for our confirmants. We ask that you'd bless Owen and Christopher, that you'd strengthen them in faith, each and every day of their lives, and that the confession they make will be one that they will always hold dear. Lord, in your mercy. We ask also, Lord, that you be with all those who face illness, sickness, disease, injury, fear, or other hurts and pains of living in this fallen, broken world. We pray especially for those that we now name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. We pray again, O Lord, for our nation and our leaders. You continue to uh, grant us uh, blessings in this land. We pray that you grant wisdom and guidance to those who are in positions of leadership. And we pray as we have done other times as well. We pray that you continue to preserve the freedoms and especially the freedom of religion that we have treasured for so many years. These things and all others we bring before you as we pray the prayer you've given to us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated for our closing hymn. So we'll sing, Go, My Children, with my blessing.